off of all the shit that's setting you back and making you vibe low and you learn to just consistently vibe high, you'll fucking get it. And once you get it, you won't fucking look back. Don't dabble. Go all the fuck in. All the way in. Don't do it for you. Make it not about you and just give every fucking thing you got to this shit because God could strike me down fucking tomorrow, dude. And I want when God strike me down, all of my people to be looking at my grave proud as fuck like, fuck, dude, that kid gave everything for us. For us. Not for himself. He didn't give a fuck about himself. He did. He sacrificed. Bro, when somebody dies and they were just all about themselves, nobody gives a fuck. They're fucking, a few family members show up. They're like, this is really sad. How the fuck did he go? It's like, dude, nobody gives a fuck. When a selfless motherfucker dies, people show out in fucking masses. Nipsey Hustle, they did his fucking funeral at the goddamn arena, bro. Because motherfuckers care. Like, yo, you got to live a life like that. You want motherfuckers to care, bro. And everybody in your life will care if you are not about yourself and you give it all for them. Straight the all right, so, uh, yeah, you heard that guy, man. I'm going to label this video, the phony baloney Christians are out of their mind. Now, I don't know if that dude's a Christian, but this is, they sympathize with things like that, man. You know, um, first of all, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Haracha Kodash, and uh, double honor to the apostles and the elders and teachers, a great millstone to rule well and teach well. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out, you know, the scripture says, man, woe be unto you when the world think well of you, okay? And the Lord said, man, point the opposite of what that guy said, man, you know, as far as, like, everybody loving you and, you know, treating you well and all of that, man. It's all, like, lies, you know? Those are lies, okay? Um, let's get into that, matter of fact. Um, oh, you, I believe that's the one or uh, thinks well of you uh let me see so what will be on to you will be on to you if the world i think it's speak well uh think well of you let me see okay there it is uh luke 6 and 26 that's what i was looking for I'm trying to get my location. All right, Luke 6 and 26. Let me get that real quick. Okay, what, there he, you heard what that dude said, right? Woe unto you. This is Matthew, excuse me, Luke 6 and 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Okay. And that's that's what it is, man. And and also onto the women as well. Let, let's and uh, those people that got money too, you know, to excess over here in this kingdom. That's not necessarily a good thing. Okay, you you got to think to yourself. Wait a minute, man. Is the Lord really dealing with me? You know, Luke six and uh, twenty four says, "But woe unto go going dialing back." It says, "But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation." Now let's go into the word rich. It says here, um, G4145, Plosios, Plosios, uh, which means wealthy, abundant in material resources, or metaphor for abounding, abundantly supplied. Okay, so you've never really been through, basically like a spoiled brat. OK, now those people, quite the contrary, uh, they're not they're not going to be knowing what it's like to struggle. And that's exactly why the scriptures say what it is. You know, basically, the inverse is going to eventually happen in order to balance the person. And it must be a balance. You know, false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Luke six. And 25, woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Okay? So what? Look, the bottom line is this, man. You know, everything is a balance. And that false balance is an abominable. All right? You don't need everybody to think well of you. You don't need that, man. Okay? Again, Luke 6 and 26 uh, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So you don't need somebody, you don't you don't want to desire Nipsey Hussle's life, okay? That man was brutally murdered, man, and that was not a good thing. So if anybody thinks that that's a good thing, man, then, hey, man, you already know the Lord ain't dealing with that guy, all right? 
And let's get a cross reference here. Uh, John 7 and 7, it says, The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Exactly. So you're not going to be in that position to where everybody is going to, yo, man, you know, it's okay to, you know, to be selfless, but you, and, and to give to people and help them, but you have to be careful who you give to. You have to give to men of the Lord who are actively participating in the ministry in sincerity. All right. Men who don't make themselves of any reputation, just like Yahweh Shai. All right. Because we have Yahweh Shai, which is the ultimate example of humility, honor, and integrity, man. All right. And uh, you got to be careful how you deal with brothers, man. I'm just telling you right now because, you know, the Lord talked about that, man. You know, when I was hungered, you know, you did this. Uh, you fed me. You know, when I was naked, you clothed me. You know, when I was in jail, you visited me. And, you know, he's basically talking about the brothers who are basically looked over. Like no, nobody's really recognizing them or whatever. It's how you treat that guy. That's how you treat your house shy, because that's the one that he's very concerned with. All right. The lowly man, the man who is the underdog. The Lord loves the underdog. That's why I used to joke with the brother when he first came into the truth or whatever. <clears throat> I was like, man, you're the top guy in all Israel, you know, because the scriptures say, man, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So, you know, it was, it was a joke, you know, but it was like kind of ringing true at the time, you know. And uh, basically, you know. <clears throat> That's why Yahweh Shai said, man, he that humbleth himself as a small child, he's greatest in the kingdom of heaven, right? In the kingdom. Because it's not about who's the baddest prophet of all time and all of these things here on the earth and trying to jock for position and things, man. That's what the, the wicked chief priests and elders were doing, man. And the Pharisees. That's what they were doing, all right? They wanted the notoriety. They wanted everybody to give and donate to them and keep their position in the high authority seats and everything like that. You see? But just we just want to just get our daily bread, man, and get by, you know, at the end of the day. May the Lord just keep us humble. John 15 and 19 says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Okay, so there you go. So, yeah, they're, they're not going to all love you and be at your funeral. And why do you want a bunch of jokers and clowns at your funeral who don't even know you like that, man? You know, just literally just there for the ride, you know. It's a pseudo respect, false respect. If you didn't really know the person, then, I mean, what are you really doing over there? What is, your condolences mean nothing, you know, if nobody really know you. You don't really know me like that. So, you know, that's why, in, you know, a lot of times when people end up getting getting judgment, you'll hear oftentimes the family members say, oh, she was such a good person. Oh, he was such a good person. He did nothing to nobody. No, that's your perspective. That's all you know of the person. But deep down, the Lord knows these people, man. The Lord knows these people, man. All right. Because you think that you got away with everything and, and no one's tracking you. But guess what? Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Heavenly Father and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For the Heavenly Father shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, don't even let me get started on the guy's appearance, because we could judge that, because, you know, we're, we're talking about the man that looks like that is never going to tell you no truth, man. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the guys that if he was healed from Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah would probably say, hey, listen, man, just go tell everybody what happened, man. But you can't roll with us, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just a bad look. The way you're looking right now is just, you know, you like legion, you know. Spiritually, that guy's like legion, man. He's got legions of demons on him. Anybody that tattoos their face all over like that and whole body, they got massive amounts of spirits on them. And that's just a fact, man. That's a spirit of rebellion. Sorcery, witchcraft, the spirit of the world. And the Lord didn't give us the spirit of the world, man. You know, that's why people hate us because we stand for integrity, truth, honor, and respect. And that's what Great Millstone represents, okay? Starting with Apostle Tahar on down, all the all elders, the brothers, everybody, all right, who understands this truth. And the men who follow Great Millstone as well, you know, it's just a pure doctrine, man. It's a pure doctrine, and that, that's what you should be ultimately following. You know, not like Paul said, man, follow me as I follow Yahweh Shai. Okay. 
So what we know to be the truth and when we hear it, like the scripture says, man, my sheep hear my voice and another they will not follow. So yeah, the Lord set up men on the earth. A classic example is uh, Acts 8 and 30, the Ethiopian eunuch who desired to Philip to uh, read him the prophet Isaiah and break down the, the prophecies to him. You know, because he knew how how can I not understand this unless a man should guide me. He wasn't saying, nah, man, I only learn from God alone. And God is my father and that's the only one I follow and that's it. That that be that as it may, but you have to understand one who's God, okay, which is Yahweh, the heavenly Father. Two, his son's name is Yahweh Shai, who is the written word of the Lord as well, and the embodiment of that, and the fact that he has ambassadors and people and disciples who later became apostles and their disciples after them that also are apt to teach other people and were set up to teach. And the Lord has a specific ordained ministry, man. All right, he has a specific line of men who are going to teach this scripture. And it's these scriptures, man, precept upon precept, man, all the way, all the way down to the time of his coming. All right. And you just have to accept that, man. All right. So no, don't listen to people like that guy who have no understanding. He hasn't departed from evil. You see how many times he said the F word, man. And Salakia, my brother, is about that. But, you know, I, I brought it out for a reason because I wanted to show you the spirit of the world, man. It's so contrary to the way I'm delivering these scriptures right now. It's just not this. It's just not the same. You can tell the spirits are completely polar opposites, man. And look, we've had our time where we partake in folly like that. So, you know, with just that type of language, whatever. But you know, you just got to be careful, man. You know, and, and and we'll get in get it in as well. But you know, listen, we're we're, we're breaking down the scriptures at the end of the day. <laughs> Psalm ninety six and thirteen, before the Lord Yahweh. Uh, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with this with his truth. Right, and that's the scriptures, the law, statutes, and commandments, man. All right, there's no getting away from it. Uh, no matter who you think you are in this life, you, you know he did say one point. You know God could strike you down at any moment, man, straight up, and um, any time could be that guy's day. You know you want to be like Nipsey Hussle so bad, man. Hey. You might just get your wish. Matthew 4, uh, 12 and 36, it says, But I say unto you that every idle word, which idle means useless, word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's right. So, look, just because you haven't gotten punished now, don't think, yeah, man, it's all forgotten. It's all good. You know, hey, what's up, man? What's for dinner? Nah, man. You know, the Lord's going to be like, listen, you got a lot to pay for, man. You know? You, you have not forsaken your sins, man. You have not asked for forgiveness. You have not given alms, you, which cover all manner of sin, which purge away all sin, all right? And which are very important to give alms as well, man, because it's showing a righteous sacrifice, man, all right? Because your earthly things that you give up, man, in the spirit, that's a spiritual sacrifice, man. You see what I mean? And that's a beautiful thing, man. And it, it, it precipitates uh, mercy, okay? And perpetuates it. So that's a good thing. You need mercy, all right? It covers a multitude of sins, Tobit 12 and 9, okay? Those that exercise alms of righteousness uh, in prayer are going to be filled with life, okay? So it said you're going to give an account on the day of judgment. So yeah, like I said, man, you might think you got away and the Lord say, hey, wait a minute. Remember this time when you were saying this and that? Yeah. Yeah, you never repented, man. And and you just kept it pushing when the Lord, he, he's going to remember that, man, if you don't repent. Acts 17 and 30, it says, In the times of this ignorance, the Heavenly Father winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he shall judge the world in righteousness, which is by the Scriptures. It says, By that man whom he hath ordained. That's talking about Yahweh Shai. Whereof? He hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. Yeah, there you have it. Okay, why? Because when the Lord Yahweh Shai returns, he's not going to meet you as a man. He's not going to be kicking it with you in the corner store, you know, drinking a St. Ives 40, you know, hanging out with you. Nah, man, he's not going to kick it with you like that, man. He's coming for one specific purpose, and that's justice and judgment, equity and balance. And destruction and righteousness, righteous indignation, man, for all the things that's been happening. 
unless you're covered by the blood of the Lamb, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And the uh, all men that's speaking of here in Acts 17 and 30, that's talking about the Israelites that were scattered abroad. That's why it says all men everywhere to repent. So, so Paul's missionary journeys that he was partaking in over there, Paul and Barnabas and whatnot, and uh, Timotheus, okay, when they were going out and they were going to different places and uh, preaching the scriptures on their journeys, you know, they were seeking out the Israelites that were scattered abroad because those are the saints of the Most High, okay? And they just needed to return again. That's what redemption is all about, backwards, like come back, okay? Grafted back in again to adopt it from the family of the Lord, Okay? And they had to be adopted because they were acting like their father, the devil, man. You know, well, really, they were acting like Satan, you know. But but they could return and be adopted because they were basically acting like a son of the devil. You know, really like the Gentiles, which is the Gentiles. The Gentiles are, are uh, demonic, man. You know, the actual physical, natural Gentiles, you know, they don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments. So when you follow that. Not to be long-winded with this, but that's when you need to return back and have to be preached the gospel to. The good news is you're an Israelite if you resonate with this truth and you have times to repent now. You know, Acts 17 and 30 again. In the times of this ignorance, the Heavenly Father winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay, again, they were scattered abroad. James 1 and 1, 1 Peter 1 and 1, Acts of the Apostles 26 and 6 and 7. You got to read these things, man. All right? The promise and the precepts and the promises in Romans 9 pertains to the Israelites, man. That's just sound doctrine. All right? And with that, the Lord willing, this was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.